as we have crossed 43 million swaps as of yesterday. To set the stage right for the remaining of the first video this morning, I would like to quote the great, late, great Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, known to the world outside of India as the Mahatma Gandhi, Mahatma meaning great soul. He said, a small body of determined spirits fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission can alter the course of history. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, The Wealthy Mindset. It's yours truly, Money Making Mitch, and as usual guys, this is not financial advice. Please do your own due diligence and research. So as to a follow-up from this morning's video, I'll continue on where the author talks about history, why it's so important, and I, <laughs> it's amazing because I drew the same comparison. He said Japan and the 1970s are parable. We have in fact seen the story before, talking about the story with tariffs and blocking and economic warfare. In the 1970s, the US auto industry was rocked by dual crises, a gas price crisis that left their large gas guzzling vehicles less competitive and a steel crisis which greatly affected US steel manufacturers. The steel crisis came courtesy of Japan, a country whose manufacturing methods far outstripped America's and which was determined to undercut American steel. It could produce steel cheaper and better than the US and the low prices that Japan was offering were simply unbeatable. By American manufacturers, as a result, many American steel workers lost their jobs. Here's an article about the steel crisis from 2021 from the Alliance of American Manufacturing, which make parallels to today's situation between the US and China. In it, former steel workers are quoted about what happened at the time. The cost was cheaper, they said and their quality was better too. Does that sound familiar, guys? <laughs> we didn't care about quality. We were the only game in town forever, they said. Like, does that ring also a bell to you? The US steel makers, and as time wore on, the automakers were being outperformed by Japan and their superior technology advancement, advancements. Our employers didn't invest in new technology until recognizing the concept of foreign competition was here to stay. Does that also sound familiar to you guys? Mm -hmm. Does it sound like Neo? The US tried to stop the bleeding with tariffs after accusing Japan of illegally dumping steel at unfairly subsidized below market rates to gain export market share. See, when they were dumping, when America was dumping their steel, it was okay. But the tariffs didn't stop the advancement of the technologically superior Japanese steel industry, which remains strong even after their imposition. Excuse me, guys. The early 70s steel crisis was soon joined by the mid to late 70s oil crisis, where the US and much of the Western world saw oil shortages and high gas prices. At that time, American automakers mostly produced giant gas guzzlers and Japan automakers exploited this crisis by rapidly introducing smaller, more fuel-efficient cars to America. Just as the environmental movement was starting to gain steam and emissions regulations were starting to take effect. Automakers responded by undergoing half-baked attempts to meet the standards, while still trying to sell their gas guzzlers by lobbying governments not to implement regulations and begging for tariffs against competing Japanese autos. Does that also sound familiar? When our boy Elon came out and made the statement saying that if the West allow the Chinese automakers to come into the West, they will destroy most of your car manufacturers in the West. So the government in America was listening. Not by actually rising to challenge and make better vehicles, but rather by asking for the rules to be changed so they could get a free win by doing nothing new. Does that also sound familiar? Remember I spoke about that, without competition, there'll be no, no reason for them to keep innovating. 
Eventually, Japan agreed to voluntarily export restrictions and U.S. automakers managed to get in gear and start making better cars. But as a result of the disruption in the 1970s, Japan is still considered one of the premier manufacturing industries in the world, automotive and otherwise, and has held the crown of the largest auto exporting, exporting country on the globe for decades. Between preparation, determination and opportunity, Japan was able to gain a lasting lead. Does any of this sound familiar? <laughs> you see, we have created a lead that's going to be lasting. Not because of the superior technology that NEO and the rest of the field have, but especially NEO. Uh, but because I keep going back to one thing. Even if we put aside the superior technological EVs that we have, they all have to come to us for battery as a service or their car, their EV, sorry, is worthless after eight years. And it will, that's why you always hear me say we will dominate the landscape because of putting our battery swap stations in every country in the world. This is why I say they all have to bend the knee to William, Emperor William Lee. That's what I mean by that. So this is part two of this morning's video and I hope this gives you guys confidence yet again this morning knowing that the Lion Envo is coming by Wednesday. If this video did that for you guys, do not forget to hit that thumbs up, guys. If you haven't yet subscribed, you might want to think about doing so because in this channel, we're trying to actually wake up the middle class to get a piece of the pie. And like Fitty said, we have that warrior mindset. We get rich or we die trying, guys. <laughs>